Dear ladies and gentlemen, this is the second part of the talk which presents flim measurements and their analysis. A first flim example was measured by Astrid Tannert and Thomas Korde at the Humboldt University in Berlin in the group of Andreas Hermann. For this measurement, the dye NBD was used to stain a canalicular vacuole of a living hepatocyte cell. The group wanted to elucidate the molecular structure of the canalicular vacuole. NBD changes its lifetime strongly in dependence of the water contents and its environment. Lifetimes have been measured in the range from 7 to 14 nanoseconds. In the flim image, we observe a very long lifetime in the hydrophobic plasma membrane. This plasma membrane with its long lifetime could also be found at the lower side of the canalicular vacuole. However, the center of the canalicular vacuole exhibits a much shorter lifetime. The group therefore concluded that the molecular structure must be of a micellar type in the center. Another example for FLIM for environmental sensing was measured by Carl Soscher and co-workers at the University of Potsdam. They are investigating the chloride transport pathway in salivary glands of the model system of cockroaches. As a suitable dye for chloride concentration measurements, MQAE was chosen. The dye is quenched by chloride ions, leading to a decrease in fluorescence lifetime at higher chloride concentration. We see here the calibration curve where the lifetime is plotted against the chloride concentration. It was measured in situ inside salivary ducts. We see a strong decrease of the fluorescence lifetime towards higher chloride concentrations. These two flim images were recorded at different chloride concentrations inside the buffer surrounding the glands. The flim measurements were performed with two photon excitation at 750 nanometer. At the left side, a physiological buffer chloride concentration was applied. The salivary reservoir in the center shows a relative low fluorescence lifetime. After this measurement, the chloride concentration inside the buffer was reduced to 2 millimolar. The reduction leads to a strong change in lifetime of the salivary reservoir, indicating a chloride concentration below 50 millimolar. However, the chloride concentration in the surrounding glands stays nearly unchanged. I now want to give you a short introduction to FRET. Here we see two proteins, which are labeled with donor and acceptor dye molecules. After binding, FRET takes place and the energy is transferred to the acceptor molecule. FRET induces quenching of the fluorescence lifetime of the donor molecule, which becomes shorter in comparison to the donor molecule measured in absence of the acceptor dye. In reality, however, we do not have only complete FRET molecules in one sample. Moreover, it will be a mixture of two populations, complete FRET molecules and donor-only molecules. FRET molecules with a higher FRET efficiency, together with donor-only molecules, will yield the same intensity ratio as a population of only FRET molecules which have a lower FRET efficiency. These two possibilities are indistinguishable by intensity FRET. However, in the TCSPC histogram, both cases show a different pattern. With the lifetime FRET, we can therefore evaluate the FRET efficiency of the bound population and the fraction of the bound to unbound molecules. In this experiment, the group of Sohail Ahmed was interested in vesicle formation pathways. The protein NVOSP was labeled with TFP while the red fluorescent protein was expressed near TOCA1. 
We see in the flim image a long lifetime inside the nucleus and a short lifetime around. If we perform a two-component lifetime analysis, we find two lifetimes. 2.1 nanoseconds, the lifetime of the donor only, can be found all over the cell as can be seen in this image. Due to FRET, the lifetime of the bound complex of NWASP and TOCAV1 decreases to 1.1 nanoseconds. The short lifetime component of 1.1 nanoseconds shows only the bound FRET molecules. As we see here, FRET takes only place on vesicles. We can also calculate the FRET efficiency of the bound FRET molecules to be around 50%. Here we have another FRET example. The group of Philippe Bastiens expressed the tandem EGFP and RFP FRET construct in living cells. The acceptor bleaching experiment shows that the donor lifetime is decreased due to FRET. In the donor flim image we find a region with strongly reduced lifetime. What is the reason for the reduction of the lifetime? The lifetime of the donor only is obtained after acceptor bleaching and accounts to 3 nanoseconds. If we calculate the FRET efficiency from the average lifetime, we see a low FRET efficiency of 25% at the cell membrane and a higher efficiency in the central region. A similar result would be obtained by intensity FRET. However, we think that this result is wrong and that the experiment must be interpreted differently. If we perform a double exponential fit, we determine two main lifetimes. The first lifetime has 3 nanoseconds, the known lifetime of the donor only, obtained after acceptor bleaching. The shorter lifetime component of 1.4 nanoseconds accounts to the molecules performing FRET. By calculating the FRET efficiency only from the short lifetime component and therefore only from molecules performing FRET, a different result is obtained. As we can see here, there is no difference of the inner region and cell membrane. The whole cell shows a FRET efficiency of around 50%. But why did we find a shorter lifetime in the central region of the cell? The double exponential fit gives us two more parameters, the amplitudes of the FRET and the donor-only components. If we calculate the ratio of the amplitude of the FRET population to the sum of both amplitudes, FRET and donor only, we can calculate the percentage of bound molecules performing FRET. In this image, the fraction of bound FRET molecules is displayed. The observed lower lifetime of the inner part of the cell can now be explained by the higher ratio of bound FRET molecules compared to donor-only molecules. Using this analysis, FRET efficiency and the percentage of binding can be derived. However, a mono-exponential decaying donor dye is important. We would like to acknowledge all the scientific groups who contributed to the results. Thanks for the financial support goes to the BMBF and European Union. Thank you for your attention.